it's roxy time make sure to like the video give it a sub if you enjoy my content so that you don't miss out on any future uploads ring that bell as well let's head on in hello 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 everyone hello mario anyway let's just get on right into it we all know why we're here you saw the thumbnail and all that i don't mean to be rude but unfortunately we have to do roxy stuff now not that i don't like roxy i hate her typing quirk though this is going to be pain for me to say, I just got done sucking down on a throat lozenge, so let's hope this lasts for the entirety of her route. This might go two times as long because, I don't know, it could just be that bad. I don't know, regardless, let's get into it. Volume 13, Friendship Wazard. You spend a good few days fucking around with your newest friends. They seem to be on their respective paths towards something. You're not exactly sure if self-actualization is a part of it, but you're trying not to be too bent up about it. This Earth's friend group seems to have a lot of, uh, interpersonal complexity. To be fair, you only really know half of the friend quadrangle. It's probably past time to meet the other two corners of it, see what all the fuss is about, get their sides of all the drama before you leap to any more judgments. You've thought a lot about what you said to Jake and what you wanted to say but didn't. You're ashamed at the thought that you might also be erring passively on the side of friendship sloshes uncomfortably in your belly against the fear that you may be choosing too much, wanting too much, changing too much. Because you've thought a lot about what Jade said to you too. That's probably why you bothered to get Roxy's address from Jane. You can't exactly stop making new friends because you aren't ready to think about what your purpose would be without that, but maybe you could do it the old fashioned way this time. Showing up on somebody's doorstep via their accepted human method of following directions to their domiciles. Their domiciles. Domiciles, Rao's right. Specific government assigned numbers seems like it might be a better than start them. Oh, just zapping directly to them when they're taught taking a shit or something. But just definitely a hypothetical situation and not at all something that's happened to you recently. Anyway, you came up with a plan and everything. You're not a real mailman that you know of, but you're going to appreciate and respect the profession so you don't mind LARPing it once more. Going back to our roots, I see, MSP Reader. You wonder briefly if there might be other guises under which we might go up to another person's house and knock on their door. Jehovah's Witnesses? But almost none of your friends ever leave their fucking room, so you're sure you wouldn't know. You zap- ooh, lovely house. I forget how nice the Lalonde house is. You step down to the street from her house and walk up the long, scary driveway through the trees, over a bridge, and up to her door. Okay, so not exactly a normal human method. What, were you supposed to stroll all the way from New York to Jane's place? She offered you bid bus money, but then remembered her fortunes tainted. She, vacilla she vacilla vacillated between giving you every single one of her dollars and burning it all in a symbolic bonfire until the two of you landed on moving it to a new, hopefully untraceable bank account. You're really not sure how deep the Batter Witch's surveillance goes, but Jane seems satisfied at least. She's going through a lot. You know how it is, having to endure huge life upending bouts of information being tossed at you more or less weekly yourself, I guess. So yeah, you skipped a step in your male person in the so Jezun, but you made it to Roxy's house in a respectable manner, which was the whole point. You're gonna make the fuck out of a good impression. You knock, and you wait. Oh, I lost! Mommy, ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> The last person comes into the tourist net. I'm sorry, it's too early in the video to be horny on main. But, I mean, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Oh, and before anyone asks... Smash. The person who comes to the door is not Roxy. At least she doesn't look like a photo of Roxy Jane she showed you. Oh, fuck. Unless Roxy's a catfish? Ugh. What a... Oh, no. What a... Oh, no. Not a cat, but anyway, hello. You did not expect this. Oh, it's you. This could be interesting. You blink. It is you? She got that part right? Do you know her? You scour her features. She does seem familiar, like a friend you almost had, or did have, very long ago. Or moderately long ago, depending on the perspective you're looking at for time from. You wonder, two you met before? No, we have not. Nor was I expecting the pleasure. Ah, shit. You thought you were onto something for once. You wonder how many more levels of memory are buried, twisted under the blown synapses of your burned out brain. You have to move forward and give up on chasing down whatever buck wild theory you were inching towards there. There are real mysteries afoot with this stranger. This one feels like a decisive moment there ever was one. Oh, fucking, you're telling me? 
Oh my god, what a wonderful way to start the fucking session, you know what I'm saying? I'm being- I'm- I, I need to chill the fuck out. I need to calm down. Someone needs to fucking bonk me over the head. I am- It's- oh, it's not even been five minutes yet. <laughs> it's not even five minutes, I'm already spouting mommy sorry in the first, like, three. Ugh, there's gotta be- What do we do here? What do we do here? A hot, attractive single mother walks up to you. Looking like she either wants to kill me or do other unscrupulous things to me. What do you- what do you- what do you think I'm gonna do, huh? What do you think I'm gonna do? I am a light player. I'm taking that chance. My luck strat- my luck stat is so damn good. Anyway, enough stalling. There's gotta be another answer here. Oh wait, you are an idiot. This is an insult. You've been spending too much time with marginally supervised aliens and a lonely maroon boy recently. That you forgot that Roxy probably lives with her parents. And it's 50-50 on the possibility of a stuffed grandma rose is in there. And if the pattern holds, it's feasible she could have told her mom about you. You play it safe, and instead of accusing anyone of online aid any crime, you ask if Roxy's home. She stares at you for a moment, her lips slightly parted. You get the feeling she's not often caught off guard, and you wonder what it is you've done wrong now. I think that's just her face, MSPA reader. Do you ever- Oh my god, I forgot. Oh my god, I forgot Rose talks so much. <clears throat> <sighs> Do you ever think you have lived through every possible iteration of an emotion, and then one day a manifestation of narrative and agency shows up on your doors that reminds you that there is yet another way to experience the acute feeling of a particular loss? You do tr what you do best and stare blankly at her, trying to figure out what in the fuck just that might mean. Oh, is that not a universal one? Well then, I can clarify. It's a roundabout way of saying no, she is not home, nor will she, she will be for quite a while. I would offer you to take a message for you, but with your bag of tricks, I think you can manage the way. She winks at you cons conscriptory, and you have never felt less like you were on <laughs> in on a plan with somebody. This has been fun, but I'm not the one you want. I wish I was. Uh, I, I need to get past this point. This is like the fifth time I've been talking. Oh my fucking. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Calm yourself, surplus. Holy shit! Oh my god! I'll go ahead and make myself scared so things start moving along. No! Unfortunately for your, me, my path is not as flexible as yous or hers. That is fair. You've wasted a certain amount of time here as it is, and I have my own purpose to come in. Oh, right! She and, um. She and Adult Dave as well, they go to fight the government and the, um, the IBC. No, IP. IP. Wait, ICP, yes. Scoot along before you touch something you shouldn't, like, uh, mm. Mm. <coughs> Okay, she's gone. All right, all right, we're centered now. This has been seven minutes of me stumbling over, stumbling around because a, a hot woman started scolding at me. Oh, okay. She shuts the door and you stand, blank and useless on the doorstep. Maybe this isn't the right house and the lady was just having a good time fucking with you. Jane had to say she hadn't used Roxy's address in forever, since Roxy didn't ever really seem to receive things she sent through the mail. And whoever this was didn't really give you any solid evidence that she knew what you were talking about. You take a minute to consider the cryptic shit the woman who is very probably not Roxy's mom just told you. You feel like a level 1 bug fuck idiot, taking on a side quest from an enigmatic wizard so far beyond you that you feel like you should have spent Friday Warfare way <laughs> spend way more time grind for and grinding first. <laughs> you mean an enigmatic sage? It feels like this is what she's going for. Anyway, whatever she said was something like you could manage the weight. Maybe this is one of an issue of time, not space. It always seems to be one of those two bastards, huh? Well, luckily for you, you have power over both. May as well follow the only lead you have. Okay, flashing light warning, by the way. You pierce on the bridge over the river, running in front of your house fast forward, holding Roxy's name in the front of your mind. Years swirl by you in a visual cacophony. Buildings rise up around you, lights flash and red and hot. There is a rush of bust of busy energy, the ebb and flow of a colonial tide, and then there's a stillness. Right, when you start to feel, you wonder if you've missed her. You feel it. You wait till it feels right, and then you stop. Holy shit! That was... a while. You traveled forward in time from John's era to meet Jane, you guess, so you suppose it isn't the most unfathomable thing to have to do it again, but wow. The trees that surrounded you just a minute ago are gone, replaced by a sea of crumbling buildings and a low, skittery sound, like pressing your ear up to an ant colony. The vibes out here are really bad. You hurry up and knock. The door opens slowly. Hello! 
pumpkin. Roxy, for sure it's Roxy this time, peeks her head out, spots you, and then squints at the empty street behind you. Seeing no threat, she bumps the door open with her elbow and drops a huge pumpkin in your arms. Oh, thanks. <laughs> a pumpkin for these trying times. She stumbles a bit over the door and jab, door jab as she does it, and you almost don't catch the pumpkin in favor of reaching for her, but she saves herself at the last moment and leans against the frame, unfazed. Here you go, little buddy. I appreciate you knocking. It's a lot more polite than the usual breaking and entering you guys do, so I picked out a nice juicy one for you. Don't go telling everyone this. Don't go, don't go telling everyone to try this shit though, or else I'll never get sleep again in my life. I'll just be running pr produce to my door 24/7. I'll own snacks to every cheese guy in existence without roast. Chess guy, whoops. Not but you're eating noises for a company. This is not at all how you thought this would go, but you honestly should have known better than to do anything with your expectations but throw them in the trash can. So you roll with it and thank you for the pumpkin, calling her by name for max politeness. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause. In fact, I'm probably gonna stop it here since that's like 10 minutes already. So yeah, we finally meet Roxy after meeting her uh, hot mom, I guess. Um, we'll see you in the next video, I guess. Bye.